Instead of working on the studio back lot, she was looking for a way out. It was again the camera lens that served to kindle a relationship. A romance with Roberto Rossellini, the Italian film director, was begun through a movie. After seeing a movie Roberto Rossellini had made, Mother had written to him in Italy saying she wanted to work with him. The film they made together was Stromboli. Stromboli was intended to be about moral responsibility after World War II, but the theme was lost in post-production editing and Hollywood's outrage. Now Mother's personal life took center stage. Expecting Roberto's child, Ingrid stayed in Italy. She left behind her husband, family, and career in California. In the 1950s, this created a scandal. She was denounced from the floor of the Senate. Some suggested she not be allowed back in the States. Robertino was born in Rome. The twins, Ingrid and Isabella Rossellini, were born some years later. Mother had married Roberto Rossellini by then and did a series of Italian films. But the publicity barrage ended her Hollywood career, and neither she nor her Italian films were marketable in America. Bambini? Ragazzi? No, non siamo stati noi, non ci andiamo mai di là. Ma dov'è adesso? Robertino, già visto Roberto Giacomo? Sì. E dov'è? È fuori. Dove? Perché le macchine. It was not until 1956 that Ingrid carefully chose to make the movie Anastasia, filmed in Europe, a fictional story about a Russian princess who is reclaimed from dishonor. American audiences saw her in the role of the rejected woman returned to her rightful place. Ingrid came to New York to receive the New York Critics Award, and she won her second Oscar for Anastasia in 1957. The charming romantic comedy Indiscreet followed with Cary Grant. It was another success. Her American career was back on track. In 1958, Mother left her Italian life and moved to Paris to marry the Swedish theatrical producer Lars Schmidt. She returned to Sweden to enjoy many summers. In the 60s and 70s, she did a series of theatrical plays in Paris and London. She continued to make films, like Cactus Flower with Walter Matthau. Mr. Dickinson, you know he's an old friend of mine. Well, I think he's taking advantage of you. Miss Dickinson, there are some things a man just can't do. I won't push Harvey Greenfield for money. I've known him too long. You do it. Well, I'll be happy to. She made the end of the sixth happiness. You've never met anyone you loved? Nor anyone who loved me. Oh, I am not attractive in that way. But don't you know you're beautiful? Once in her life, every woman should have that said to her. I thank you for being the one who said it to me. And she won her third Academy Award for her droll performance in a character role in Murder on the Orient Express, directed by Sidney Lumet in 1974. I was an um, um, international group um, uh, for getting money for um, African mission mm. from American rich. Um, I, I speak Swedish uh, uh, to big audiences in, um, in Swedish American institution in Minneapolis and uh, other big cities. In 10 weeks, we make um, um, $14,000 and, and 27 cents. Mother's marriage to Lars Schmidt ended in 1975. He continued to live with his new family in France, and Mother moved to London, where she lived alone. In 1976, Mother made A Matter of Time with Liza Minnelli, directed by Vincent Minnelli. In a fitting pattern of film symmetry, 
Mama returned to Sweden in 1977 to work with the renowned filmmaker Ingemar Bergman. It was the only time they worked together. Autumn Sonata was a collaborative work that used autobiographical elements from both their lives. This time, she played a famous musician who chooses to pursue her career and pays the price, endured by many artists who follow their gifts. Autumn Sonata with Liv Ullmann as the lonely, unhappy daughter was to be Ingrid Bergman's last feature film. I see an otek bild of myself. I have never been a vuxen. My face and my body have altered. I have to have my memory and experience. Even for all that, I am not even born. I think Mama reached some of her greatest acting achievements in later years, going beyond her great physical beauty, with such things as the televised drama, The Human Voice. But if you hadn't phoned, I would have died. Yes, I have lots of courage. <laughs> no! Listen, wait! And in her unexpected casting as Israeli Prime Minister Golda Meir in the television drama Golda, for which she won a posthumous Emmy Award. In 1979, already ill with cancer, Mama attended a tribute in Los Angeles by the Variety Clubs of America. Many stars were there. On behalf of the King of Sweden, she received the gold medal for lifetime work. I was there, as was Isabella, Martin Scorsese, and Roberto. Of her four children, only young Ingrid was missing due to the happy occasion of giving birth to her baby son in Rome. At that event, our mother spoke about the impact of her father's home movies. You see, when my father discovered that something new had happened, and that was motion pictures, he was so enthusiastic that he went on my birthdays and rented a camera that he cranked by hand. That is me sitting in my mother's lap. My grandfather and grandmother are behind me. That was my first appearance on the screen. <laughs> uh, well, uh, here I'm three years old, and I'm now coming to my mother's grave. What you see to the left there is her grave, and I'm putting flowers on her grave. And that's why I was so happy to have those other um, shots before where I can see her move. After her mother and father's death, Ingrid, at 13, had gone to live with her adored Aunt Ellen. Six months later, Aunt Ellen died of heart failure in Ingrid's arms. At 14, Ingrid wrote in her diary, It was in the fall of 1929 that I realized that I wanted to give myself absolutely to the theater. Acting was to be her constant love the one that never disappointed her. She died in 1982 on her birthday, August 29th. She was 67 years old. We mourned our beloved mother, knowing where you go, there blooms the earth.